Hi, my name is Paul Offit. I'm talking to you today representing the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. It's Wednesday, May 28th. What I want to talk to you about is a paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine last week. It was written by the Commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration and the head of something called the Centers for Biologics Evaluation and Research, which is basically the vaccine arm of the FDA. And what these two men were proposing was a new framework for how to think about COVID vaccines. And in order to understand what they did, we need to take a step back and look at the role of the FDA and the role of the CDC. The FDA is a regulatory body. So, for example, if a company submits data showing that a vaccine is safe or effective, they will decide whether or not it can be licensed for use. The CDC then decides who should use it, who should get it. They're the recommending body. What the FDA did in this particular paper was they usurped the purview of the CDC. And they said that for COVID vaccines, that anyone over 65 years of age, age can receive a vaccine, a yearly vaccine. But for those less than 65 years of age, only those who were in high risk groups could receive a yearly vaccine. And that that was now going to be part of the license. So in other words, now the vaccine is not licensed for use in people less than 65 years of age who are not then in high risk groups. That then makes it possible that insurance companies won't cover it. Now, there are a lot of legitimate reasons for people who are not in high risk groups who are less than 65 years of age to get a vaccine, a COVID vaccine, a yearly vaccine. So, for example, if you're a parent taking care of an immune compromised child or if you're uh, taking care of an elderly uh, grandparent who uh, who uh, would be at special high risk if they got this infection. Um, or if you are a 35 year old healthy person working in an emergency department where you're seeing COVID often. Or if you have a friend who suffered a moderate infection where they were home for days coughing with high fever and chills and you don't want to get a moderate infection and you too would like to get a vaccine, which would offer you four to six months of protection against a moderate infection. Those are all legitimate reasons to get a vaccine. What's happened now is, um, and my concern is that what uh, the FDA just did was they just took that choice away from you. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's the Secretary of Health and Human Services, has said this is a matter of choice. He said that in the past, and he has said, and I quote, that I will never take a vaccine away from someone who wants it, whereas, unfortunately, that's what just happened. The other thing that I think was concerning here is that recently, just in the last couple of days, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has said that he is not going to now allow a COVID vaccine to be given to healthy children or to pregnant people. The irony of that is that if you look at that paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, pregnancy is listed as a high risk group, which it should be, because pregnant people will have about a one and a half to two fold increased risk of being hospitalized or dying from this virus. So on the one hand, the head of the FDA, Marty McCarry, said that pregnancy is a high risk uh, category. And then on the other hand, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says that he's not going to now allow uh, uh, people who are pregnant to receive this vaccine. So. It's like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, and this has all been very confusing for people, and we're all now trying to sort it out. Thank you.